About a month ago, the largest pipeline in the United States that accounts for 45% of the East Coast fuel supply was hacked. Gas stations along the U.S. East Coast are beginning to run out of fuel. The largest petroleum pipeline between Texas and New York is out of commission this morning. A major U.S. pipeline has now been offline. From the cyber attack. Following a cyber attack. After a cyber attack was discovered late last week. A Russian criminal group is behind the hacking of a crucial energy pipeline. This is potentially the most substantial and damaging attack on U.S. critical infrastructure ever. The hackers responsible operate under the name Darkside. 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 The Darkside ransomware. Now, if you don't live in the southeastern United States, you may not have noticed just how much this affected the region. Because within a week of the hack that caused Colonial Pipeline to shut down their 5,500 mile pipeline that runs from Texas all the way to New Jersey, 12,000 gas stations across the southeastern United States reported being completely empty. And that that caused people to go absolutely insane. Everyone was lining up at the few gas stations that still had fuel left, filling up anything they could to the point of a news release stating not to fill up plastic bags with fuel. This was a real thing. So how did this all happen? Which brings us to the real question I wanna answer, who is Darkseid? Where did they come from? And just how exactly were they able to successfully hack 47 companies in the span of only nine months, including the largest pipeline in the United States to the point of shutting it down and successfully extorting over $90 million? This is a story of the hacking group Darkseid. Real quick for everyone watching, we were just recently hit 300,000 subscribers. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of y'all. And this video I actually had in the works before we hit that. And it is actually one of my more, one of my favorite videos that I have ever made. I really spent a lot of time researching and editing this video. So if you enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. I love going over topics like this that are still in the space, but I'm able to cover these types of hacker groups or events that occur. And I appreciate every single one of y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of the video. It's a good one. When you think of a hacker group named Darkside, you may be picturing a group of masked up individuals in a poorly lit room, hacking their way into companies, all wired out on Red Bull and Doritos. But that's not the case. It's, um, it's much worse. You see, Darkside isn't just a person or a group of people in a room hacking away. It's anyone who wants to hack into these companies using the ransomware developed by Darkseid. So there is a group named Darkseid, but they're the developers, the developers of Darkseid Ransomware. They have this ransomware as a service business model in which Darkseid grants access to their ransomware and tools to people known as their affiliates. Now this only occurs after the affiliates have been properly vetted to make sure that they actually know what they're doing, as well as to make sure they're not a fed, of course. And in return, Darkseid receives a share of the ransom payments. That's what this is all about, not for political gain, not to hurt society, but for money and money alone. As a matter of fact, they actually have a code of conduct. It states their affiliates may not attack hospitals, hospices, schools, universities, nonprofit organizations, and government agencies. They want to appear ethical. They want to appear apolitical. They aren't choosing sides here. They just want to take money from those who have too much. And actually, they're donating a portion of it to charities, a, a true Robin Hood story. Even though many charities deny this donation considering it's being obtained illegally and I mean they hacked the largest pipeline in the United States causing it to shut down and spreading pandemonium across the southeast with one of their main goals to be that they're only for the money and they don't want to hurt society. Either that's a lie or they just really missed the ball on this one. So how does this whole hacking thing work? In order to understand that, let's start at the beginning, August of 2020. This was the first time Darkseid has ever surfaced, the first we had ever heard of them, and it was on Russian language hacking forums. They were advertising everything they had to offer, their ransomware, their tools, their ethics, all in an attempt to woo affiliates from other ransomware programs. They really wanted to show everyone, their affiliates and even potential victims alike, just how ethical, professional they were and how they valued their reputation. As in, when they hack into a company and they pay, all guarantees will be fulfilled. But if you don't, all of your data will be published, it'll be leaked to the media, to your partners, to your customers, to serve as an example, an example to future victims, just what will happen if they don't pay. 
All of this is very enticing to potential affiliates. And look, when I say they operate using a ransomware as a service business model, they are actually operating like a true business. Once one of these affiliates have applied, been vetted, and are approved, they get access to an administration panel that looks like this. It is just as complete as any business you have in mind, if not more. This administration panel is where everything happens. They can generate builds for Windows environments, for Linux environments, and they can adjust just about anything they need to best fit the victim. The admin panel also has a section called Dark Side Leaks. This is where affiliates publish victim information for the purpose of coercing their victims to pay the ransom demands. But most importantly, this admin panel is where affiliates are able to communicate with their victims, negotiate with their victims, and accept payments. It is a one-stop shop for managing victims. But I'm nerding out too much on this admin panel and how they actually treated this whole operation like a business. I mean, they had an admin panel, build generator, forum, support, chat, everything. But let's take a look into an actual hack. The Colonial Pipeline. What happened and how? April 29th. April 29th, 2021, this was the first time the hackers gained entry into the networks of the Colonial Pipeline company. They did this through a virtual private network, you know, like VPNs that you see on every YouTube channel there is. Well, companies will use a VPN to allow employees to remotely access the company's computer network. You can only access it if you have the proper credentials to do so, but the hackers, they somehow managed to obtain a username and password that was no longer in use, but still, still had access to Colonial's network, which, it's dumb for Colonial. I mean, how are you not going to restrict access to an account that is no longer in use? It's common practice. But Colonial Pipeline decided, eh, we don't got to do that. You'd think the biggest pipeline in the United States worth billions of dollars and owned by a conglomerate of companies worth hundreds of billion dollars would take better precautions. <laughs> you thought they didn't even have multi-factor authentication. You know, when you log into something where it texts you a code and only then can you access your account when you, when you probably put in that code? <laughs> Yeah, they still have no idea just exactly how this information was obtained to infiltrate their network, but they did infiltrate their network. And on Thursday, May 6th, 2021, after spending a week just poking around the network, seeing what's going on, because at this point, nobody knew they had gained access. They launched their ransomware attack that took only two hours to encrypt and steal 100 gigabytes of data from the Colonial Pipeline. And shortly before 5 a.m. the next day, a ransom note was found by a control room employee demanding millions of dollars in cryptocurrency, which prompted the shutdown of the largest pipeline in the United States that 45% of the East Coast relies on for fuel supplies. The way this dark side ransomware operates is using a double extortion scheme. That means that hackers not only encrypt and lock up the data so that Colonial Pipeline cannot access that data, but they steal the data and threaten to make it public. And how do they do this? Their dark side leaks site on the dark web. They will leak all of this company's data if they don't pay the ransom, and ransoms typically range from $200,000 all the way up to $20 million. It all depends on the company in which is being hacked, because as they say, they don't want to hurt the company or, or ruin the company. They just want a little bit of extra money that they have. Oh, and they won't only publish it on their Dark Side Leaks site. They have a press center on the site for any media to be able to contact them so they can publish it. They will also send it directly to the partners, clients, and customers of this company to make sure that they know that this company and potentially even their data has been leaked. So what this means is the company isn't only at risk of having their data leaked, but they can't even access their data until they pay the ransom. But I wanna talk about the hack itself, Darkseid's method from start to finish. There are five clusters to this hack, where three of them I'm gonna combine into one, so three main clusters, three main stages of this hack. First, they start off with the initial compromise. This is them accessing the private network using credentials or malicious emails with links or SQL injection. Or in other words, this initial compromise, it's, it's where they initially gain access to where the data is located. What they do next is establish their foothold in the network, escalate their privileges, and then just full on internal reconnaissance. This is quite literally them just poking around, seeing if they find anything interesting in the network that they can use to their advantage that they can take or that they can escalate their privileges in order to gain access to something else. They use tools like PowerView to see where specific users are logged into and check which machines on the domain the current user has local administrator access on. And other tools like Bloodhound to identify highly complex attack paths that would otherwise be impossible to quickly identify. And the median dwell time for them just secretly poking around the network? 45 days. Then after they're done, it's time to complete the mission. They deploy the dark side ransomware, and this is where the magic happens. 
weapons, data exfiltration, data theft extortion. This is where the victim's data is stolen, encrypted, and they're notified of the ransom. And then what happens? This all depends on the company and how they negotiate. But for Colonial Pipeline, they had people up in arms because one day, a single day after they received the ransom note, they paid the ransom of $4.4 million. That's real crazy, right? But you know what's also crazy is the fact that that's only 75 Bitcoin. Yeah, 75 Bitcoin is worth roughly four and a half million dollars. Crypto has been pretty wild lately. But anyway, what this ransom payment got them was a decryption tool, a decryption tool to allow them to gain access back into their data and the hopes that Darkseid would keep their word, which to be fair, they always did, to eliminate the threat of them leaking that stolen data by uh, deleting the stolen data. A decision Colonial stated had to be made as their job and duty is to that of the American public and that this was the right decision to make for the country. A valiant effort if I've ever seen. Or they realized it was cheaper to pay $4.4 million instead of rebuilding their entire infrastructure and losing $3.5 million a day. No, maybe they're just looking out for the well-being of the American public. Let's go with that. Either way, due to their poor cybersecurity practices, Darkseid was able to hack into their network. They were able to implement the ransomware that collected and encrypted their data and extort ransom payment of $4.4 million from the Colonial Pipeline Company. But the story doesn't end there. In fact, a big turning point for Darkseid, one they hadn't experienced in their previous 46 successful extortion attempts, they got hacked back. Not by Colonial, of course, they don't even know how to implement multi-factor authentication or deactivate a damn account that no longer has access. No, Elliptic, a London-based blockchain analytics firm identified the Bitcoin wallet used by Darkseid to collect ransom payments. Because again, this was just one of many ransom victims by Darkseid since they surfaced in August of 2020. And in this Bitcoin wallet, we discovered that Darkseid and its affiliates bagged over $90 million in the past nine months from only 47 victims. 90 million, that is an average of $1.9 million per victim. Or if you want to do the math and in terms of length, that is $10 million a month. And that's a lower bound, meaning that's what they have found and what they can prove. We don't know if they had other wallets or anything else that there's always more information out there, right? This is just what they know for sure. And this discovery shed more light on their business model as ransomware as a service because he knew they took a share of the ransom payments, but they were able to identify the split. So any ransom payment $500,000 or below, Darkseid received 25%. Any ransom payment $5 million or more, Darkseid received 10%. And I can only guess that Darkseid received 15% on the amount between $500,000 and $5 million because that is how much they received on the $4.4 million paid by Colonial Pipeline. It's just that because one article by Elliptic states this, while another states this, and I can't find one single article that states all of these splits in itself. So let's just go with that. Darkseid receives 10% over $5 million, 25% under $500,000 and 15% in between. But it doesn't matter because what we do know is that Darkseid received $15.5 million in ransom payments while its affiliates bagged $74.7 million. The people actually hacking into these companies and implementing the Darkseid ransomware. But where's the real hack back? Because that's not necessarily hacking back and not to undermine anything that Elliptic did, but the information of transactions are available publicly on the blockchain. So they're just able to see which one was Colonial Pipeline, what wallet that went to, and they're able to see more information about that wallet, which good on them. Because if you don't know, that's literally what a blockchain is in layman's terms. It's just a record of transactions. And in this case, a transaction of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain. But with that information and all that Elliptic did, they were able to see where the Bitcoins were being spent and exchanged. They were able to follow the money, which was key because it allowed the DOJ, the United States Department of Justice to seize $2.3 million in Bitcoin that was paid to Darkseid from Colonial Pipeline. Or if we want to be exact, because this isn't Bitcoin, 63.7 Bitcoin. Still crazy how that's that much money. And due to this pressure from the United States, Darkseid announced that it is shutting down. Just as they said, due to the pressure from the US, the affiliate program is closed. The statement said referring to intermarry hackers, the so-called affiliates, and they finish it off with stay safe and good luck. Now, Darkseid has always kept their word in the past. If they said they're going to do something, they did it. If they received their ransom, they did not leak. If they didn't, they did. So we have no reason not to believe them 
but I guess only time will tell if Darkseid really did shut down or if they decided to lay low for a bit just to reappear under another name sometime in the future. That's the story of Darkseid Ransomware. Stay safe and good luck.